I listened to Frank Zappa and he said that he didn't really listen to music growing up. Eddie Van Halen pretty much saying the same thing. I didn't listen to music growing up. So that I guess the idea was is that for them they were trying to make sounds and the music just was the result of of adapting sounds and they were not particularly into trying to sound like anybody else and that's the reason why they were so unique is that they were working with sound they were not working with music at least that's what I'm deriving from it is that in order to create a new sound you have to be concerned about the sound not about the music there are some musicians that are into courting into making things so like Billy Joel and Elton John the guys that play the pianos you know oh um Eddie Van Halen knew how to play the piano uh that was because his of, of his upbringing and uh when you play piano you have access to all the notes to make all the chords but you can't slide anything and so you can't get sharp sharper sharp you can't get sharper or flatter uh on the notes and if you need to make something sound bright you would want the things to go a little bit sharper on a note and uh, when you're singing they talk about trying to keep things a little bit sharp and that means bringing the note up from the 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 mid part it's not about singing the the exact note it's about singing it just a little um, higher in pitch so that it um, doesn't I guess deviate down into you know being uh, off key or something but um to keep your notes just a little bit sharper than normal. And uh, Frank Zappa said he was, um, he was really, what really did it for him was listening to um, the, the musician that he attributes all of his success to. And uh, I forgot what his name is. It's like Varese or something. He's a, he's an experimental musician and uh, Frank Zappa was really turned on by all the percussion that this guy was using um, Eddie Van Halen says that he stopped listening to Eric Clapton after um, he left Cream he just wasn't interested in Eric it was when Eric Clapton was with Cream that he listened that he listened to him. he said after that he just didn't listen to music and uh well so recently or i mean or when it came out but that was kind of like you know and so the, i guess the idea is is that he doesn't these guys are more into the making of the sounds and then trying to figure out how to make a song from the sounds that uh inspire them and i can understand that a little bit you know i'll whenever i program I'm thinking about the little things that I learn and how to exploit them. Just as in this video game, when I learned about slingshot slingshotting, I was I was inspired to see what I could do with a slingshot, with the slingshot technique. And I keep telling people this is this is OP that to slingshot, and they're just like you know what the you know they know what a slingshot is they just don't exploit it and uh i don't know i just i think the universe gives you something to do and you just exploit it you know it's not like it's important and some people do it for money and others just like to do it you know I don't know if it's true or, you know, I've said before that I think this entire world is a falsehood. Uh, I don't believe this is the world I was born into. And 
I'm getting the feeling that it's everything you know is wrong type world. But I'll just keep talking because, you know, who, who, who could be listening to me? Could it be somebody here in this world or in another world? Could it be the angels above? That's my disposition. I've got I've got to just keep talking because it's the only way I'm going to remain sane is to keep talking, and that's how I get through this. It's not and all the demons all they ever tell you is nobody's listening, and I'm like so what? I mean that's that's your concern. That's not my concern. My concern is um, I mean to some degree I would like the people to use my website. Uh, like today, uh, just yesterday, I was meeting with some people from the union of my grocery store. And they were there to give me a death and dismemberment uh, insurance. Um, had me sign that out. And I, and I told them what I do now that I'm unemployed. And I prefer to be unemployed. I manage this website and then I tell them all the intricacies of it and they're just like stone faced it's like they don't care and the feeling that I'm getting is that the universe tells me I don't care I don't care I don't care what you have to say you're 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 worthless you're you're not you know and I think it's a test I think it's a test to see how far I will keep going regardless of what the universe thinks. Because, I mean, what else do I have to lose? I mean, if, if, I'm, if I'm for me and I'm in support of what I do, it's probably best that I don't care what anybody else thinks. Because then I'm going to keep on doing what I believe turns me on I'm going to keep doing it and I think that's good to just keep on doing my 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 uh, uh, cousin Glenn who is a painter just said you got you got to keep doing it and when Jesus talks about uh, mustard seed of faith and that you keep walking you can move mountains uh um well, it says with a mustard seed of faith, you can move mountains. For the longest time, I thought what he meant was that you just literally tell this mountain, go from here to there. What he was really saying, I think, was get up every morning, walk, and the mountains move past you. You're moving mountains because you're doing it a little bit each time. And so to keep walking is is the idea. You're falling and then you catch yourself. That's a little bit of a faith. You know, babies have to get up and fall forward and they fall on them they fall on the ground and they do it several times until they've completely mastered the the concept. And then their um be, their brains adapt and their muscles that are controlled by the brain also adapt to the action and are, you're able to develop the ability to walk and walking all it is is it's a controlled fall you're falling forwards and your feet are catching you as you're falling forwards and then over time you're able to stylize that walk and become you know do other things with it and then you develop agility to to make turns at just the right moments and people think how in the world am I able to dance and do all this other stuff and manage that? Your brain uh, is designed to adapt to the things that happen around you that tend to happen. And then over time, you're able to adapt to all sorts of, of uh, situations. And that's what inspires people, I think. That's what inspires me is the ability to adapt to any situation, such as in this game, any situation. And at this time of the morning, when there's like nothing else to do, um, probably at 6 or 7 is going to be the time that I'll be able to make. Um, and it looks like I'm not on VS this time, I'm on NC. 
um, this is when you po possibly will make resource and that and I and I desperately am in need of resource right now because uh, I used a ton of it the other day resources um what you get resource whenever you hold a base whenever you whenever you capture and you can't really do it on the pretzel the pretzel um you could if nobody else really cared about the stuff i know i wish the whole map was open the reason why they don't do that is because they don't want people to be like um all over the map and i'm like why not is this isn't like you're going to keep the action going all day long people are gonna they need to sleep they need to go to sleep and come back the next day the rest of us need resource and we need to be able to use that resource in the day but if everybody is like working full throttle all the time then you're not going to have people being able to get resource to be able to use it the next day to benefit anyone and i just don't think they have a complete concept of what makes this game successful or not but then again i keep saying this whole world's a falsehood and so i can understand why people are stupid um it's my perception that these people don't learn anything they're not even real they don't they don't exist that's the feeling and the more that people are able to reciprocate and and use your style and able to learn from it and improve the game that's when you know you're in the right world but whenever nobody improves their game they always play the same way and they ignore you you know you're in a falsehood you know that everything everybody is a lie the whole world's a lie um the fact that we voted for donald trump that was a lie this is all a lie and the only truth that i have here is the stuff that i know is true such as from the bible and the experience and understanding that i develop over time uh is true but it seems like anytime i look at a documentary or somebody talking about music or something i don't know if i can believe it i'll learn it and i'll say this is what these people did and if it sounds plausible i'll 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 um, latch onto it but I don't know how true it is um, it could be a complete falsehood you just the thing about information from the world is is that you don't you don't live your life by it um, you uh, so if people tell me to go out and buy uh, something because it's going to be rare someday. I I will not believe it. I won't I won't go out and buy anything, just because it's going to be rare someday. I I don't invest time in trying to develop a persona because people try to do that to become famous. But what if this is all a falsehood and you never, no matter what you do, nothing you ever do will ever be accepted nobody will care or be concerned or even be aware of you that's the end game of all of this is that it starts out that you're trying to do something in the world and on the end of it you have it all taken from you and the 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 test is to see if you'll if you will uh commit suicide if you will you know are you willing to put up with losing everything and are you able to keep your yourself together in the end of it and i think i do i can because there's a lot of things that inspire me that keep me walking each day and that's the idea is to keep walking you just the things that inspire you, whether it be, um, I know that there was this lady that was talking about, um, and I guess the best, the truest things and things you hear from people that are down and out, 
um, I'm not hearing anything true from celebrities that really concerns me. Um, I used to be in the old, in the old days, I would really be concerned about what celebrities had to say. Um, these days, the things celebrities say tend to be more mystical and not something you can really develop any truth from. It's like they don't have any reason to be logical. The people at the bottom, the people that are homeless, and like Mark Horvath's um, um, Invisible People, um, there was a lady that was living under a bridge in, in Seattle. And uh, she said that how she got through each day, she could get up, and she would look for the most perfect, most beautiful thing in nature that she could find. She would find the most perfect leaf. And and for her, that was inspiration enough to get her through her day. That's kind of, I think, how it is for everyone. They, they Every day has got to be about something. And that gets them through the day. It might be a victory. It might be... Um, that you're just, I don't know, you just, you learn something new. Yesterday, it was coming out to my mom and letting her know that I was wasting money on OnlyFans. And uh, she turned around and she said, um, uh, or she said, no, no more of that. No more of that foolish spending money. And I said, oh, now I really see it now. That everything I spend my money on is foolishness. That was her perception. And I said, you don't realize it, but I was spending money on those porn stars or, or, or the people that were showing up naked on OnlyFans because they're trying to get through their lives. And this is just another form of income. But she, it did not hit her ears anywhere. And... She's more concerned with the things that, you know, like like people who are really poor and uh, the very bottom, you know, of our society. Not people that are transitioning from being beaten by their husband. They're trying to come up with some sort of income by which they can have the life they want, which is to start a family which is what a lot of these porn stars end up doing. Uh, some of them have families and they disappear. Um, they figure out some way to disappear. Out and they understand that when they put makeup on, they become the porn star. But if they don't have the makeup on, you would not be able to recognize them. And so once they realize that they can do something like that, I guess, then they can become a porn star, get the money, invest it, start a family, whatever, and then they disappear and you never see their face again because you don't know what they look like without the makeup. <coughs> and probably is what drives it is that they, they go out into the world and they don't see anybody like saying, oh, you're such and such or you're such and such. Um... It probably doesn't happen, and so as a result, they probably figured out that, you know, this is okay. They can get through this okay. Uh, but, you know, they might become a recluse, or they just wear some sunglasses. They figure out some way to disguise themselves, because that's important. If you're to ever get famous, the best, the, the worst thing about being famous is being recognized. Because then once you're recognized, then you're badgered all the time, either one way or another about your about your persona. And uh, you probably would like just to have time off and be away from who you are um, on screen. And uh, I think it, that's the reason why celebrities live in New York is because in New York you walk down the street and see about 100, 200 people that all look like celebrities. And it's it's a great way to um, it's a great great way to pretty much become invisible. To but the thing that's funny is is that celebrities so so much desire to be invisible 
and the invisible people in Mark Horvath's world, they're automatically invisible. They're not, they don't have money. They don't have the fame. They don't have something to rely on to get them out of the slum. Um, so they're automatically invisible and the celebrities are desiring to be invisible because they don't want to, they don't want to, um, they want to be able to live their lives in privacy and not like really have any relationships with people because um, <clears throat> they come to the realization that some people are fake. The, that the world that they're around is kind of a falsehood. Just the way that I see the world is, you know, nobody really cares about me, so I'm invisible. Um, is probably for my own good that I'm invisible. But for celebrities, um, the desire to be invisible um, is, is great. Some of them hang on to their fame. They want the fame because it's like love. Um, such as Crosby, um, I think uh, Karen Carpenter probably relied on her celebrity because she wanted to be in front of a, maybe a an audience, and then it was ruined because somebody said she wouldn't have that audience possibly because of her looks, and that's pro what probably what drove her to to um, lose weight, you know, cr crazily. Um, but there's some people, I think the the group Kiss benefited greatly from not, um, from all, you know, when they, when they took their makeup off, nobody knew who they were. The makeup permitted them to separate themselves from uh, their, their um, characters on stage from themselves. That's the whole purpose of Glamour Rock is to be something different on stage than you are in real life. And when you're off stage, you're not the person that you are on stage. Just like David Bowie isn't Ziggy Stardust, and uh, you know, and uh, Deborah Her Deborah Debbie Her Harry is not Blondie, and uh, you know, it's, it's something they would leave, leave on stage so that they can go ahead and be normal off stage. Daft Punk, nobody who knows who these guys are. Um, uh, studio Killers. Nobody knows who Studio Killers are. You can't even tell if the lead singer is a female or a male. Um, that's, that is, I think, what a lot of musicians, if they ever got popular, would want is the capacity to not have to, to, um, to create, I mean, some musicians, some you know, like Britney Spears and what's her name, Th those those girls like Lady Gaga and, and uh, I can't even recall her name. The one that's about California girls and you know uh, Perry. Um, those guys are developing styles and they like it because they're girls and girls like style and they like uh, looking certain ways. They like exhibiting all the various sorts of styles that they can produce because when you got money you start wanting to 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 develop the fashion and uh, develop uh, fragrances and stuff you know because you're trying to find other things to express yourself in terms of looks guys don't give a shit uh, I personally don't give a shit about I mean, I love their looks. I love the way girls look, and I love that they they're into that. But we're not uh, we're not really that concerned about perception. And the reason why they're concerned about perception is they don't have enough people don't respect women enough, and their concern becomes more about people's perception of them because they get they get abused I think it's awful and that's the reason why I take my money and I throw it at these uh, ladies on OnlyFans because I can't imagine how many of them are getting abused because I've heard the statistic 
that one in five are raped. I can't imagine how men treat women, uh, how they can even treat women the way that, you know, that, that, that would d um, diminish who they are, you know, that, that cause them to go out and do porn. You don't see very many men in porn. It's usually women. And the men tend to be stars above the stars because the women need somebody to, to, to interact with. They don't interact with a different man each time. They always interact with the, the alpha male porn star and, you know, like Rocco Sofredi. And uh, that guy's been in porn for like 40 years, 40, 50 years or something. I mean, he's older than me and uh, I'm, he's still active. And those guys are just like, they're, I mean, they're basically just a, good, a pretty face with a dick. And uh, they have to come, I guess, be something a bit more than that and have some style. Um, try to create scenarios, maybe do some acting. But at the very basic level, they're like some of the other guys that are just kind of like, you don't see them or you see them and all they do is just fuck sluts. Um, us fappers, we don't really care. We're just there to see the action, see people having sex. And, uh, I mean, it's really sad that people will say that, you know, you guys are a minority. The, th the truth is, is there's a lot of people fapping. And there's a lot of people having sex. I'd say not 10% of them are actually open about who they are, about sexually who they are. 90% are afraid or fearful that anybody would ever find out what they, what kinds of, of, what kinds of, um, oh, um, what do you call them, fetishes they have. There, there are some really crazy sexual fetishes out there that I didn't even know were considered fe sexual fetishes, such as people setting fire to things, people that uh, enjoy seeing people, uh, seeing stuff squished, seeing people squished. There are some crazy, crazy ass psychological stuff out there that people enjoy that there are people that enjoy it you know like seeing cars um, crushed things ripped apart you know by grinders and you know there are people that enjoy junk like that and then there's probably the same people that listen to heavy metal I you know I, for me, the only thing that excites me is to see all the emotion and all the all the emotion that goes through a woman's face. That's what attracts me. That's what gets me off. It's to see all the emotion in a woman's face. And faces are pretty much all I really need to get off. I see all the beauty and all the different configurations of a woman's face and I get off. If I was to ever have a relationship with a woman, I'd probably lose that because then I would be looking at her and she'd be concerned about me looking at her. I get, I get off on seeing all the various um, configurations and expressions of women. Uh, uh, women, uh, usually beautiful women, but as you get more into looking at stuff and you're fapping off, and the reason why you're fapping in the first place is because you get dopamine release in your brain. And it's really there to encourage you to go out and have sex and create and, and produce children and start families. Um, but people look down upon it if you're just fapping because it's so easy and it creates the desired effect well which would you rather have me fapping or going out and getting little vials of cocaine because it's the same thing 
the difference is is one's a little more disgusting and will shock people the other you can do and nobody ever sees it you know but the other one is destructive fapping pretty much is healthy um there are people that do heroin if you go and look at the documentary about go-go's they're all doing all sorts of drugs and i had no idea they said they were the first girl band with their own music and stuff and they're doing drugs that's how they got to that place is by doing lots of drugs and that what that says to me is they've got a lot of social anxiety they're um probably i don't know if this is the case with women um but the i can imagine that they probably are not really sure if they're if if people are going to be accepting of them in order to cope with that they take drugs probably to get away from the the persona and the fame probably because it's always just been about who they were before they ever got famous that they did a lot of drugs you know they were talking about their their drummer having uh was going to have a uh a heart operation and they said they, they'd give her everything uh they would permit her to to take mushrooms anything that wasn't going to be hard on her heart i don't know if mushrooms i think if you were going to hallucinate you might hallucinate something that's bad that's going to be not good for your heart because anything that's going to cause your heart pressure to go up your blood pressure to go up your heart rate to go up is going to ruin is going to hurt you so i guess they kept her away from the amphetamines or they kept her away from drugs that accelerate your heart rate and keep you awake uh, but they came about during the time whenever uh the law enforcement really wasn't controlling drug use and uh, that was back in the 70s. And if you think about it, a lot of our best music came out in the 70s and 80s, early 80s. Uh, when mus uh, Musicians have no problem finding drugs. That um, it's, it's not just the music business, it's just the fact that musicians um, all tend to be into it. It's not hard for them to find a musician who knows where to get it, you know. And drugs are necessary, I guess, to be creative. Um, because you're trying to, probably trying to get rid of a lot of your skeletons so you can focus on just being entertained by the, your playing and coming up with ideas and stuff, you know. What I do is I basically... I make myself open to everybody about everything. I I have no intimacy. My intimacy is open. And in that, I, I'm permitted to do whatever the heck I want. Probably, you know, I was more creative whenever I was desiring for people to accept my stuff. But now I'm less... I, I'm less... Um, I don't really have any reason to show anybody anything, so there isn't any incentive for me to go out and create stuff that maybe would inspire people. I think the only thing that I do now that might inspire people is the way I talk and the things I talk about. And there are a lot of people that say, well, nobody cares, and I'm like, well, that's just your perspective on what everybody cares about. And there are people out there that probably think I care, and which I do, and uh, also care about what I have to say. And uh, I think they're angels. I think I think really the people that are really listening to what I'm saying are angels. I think I don't think there are any really real humans. Maybe there are, but I get the feeling that the the humans are no longer in my world and that the only people that will listen to me are angels 
And so that's my, there, there are the ones, there's the angels that have no interest in what I have to say. And then there are the angels that really it's, are inspired by things I say. They really, and I know they're, they're there because they come into my world and they exhibit themselves and they play with me. And I mean, you know, you know, they, they, um, glow around me, um, and they're, they're, and every now and then I get a message from somebody who'll say, I like what you have to say. But it's usually somebody that just pops in and pops out. I never see them again. Those are angels. They can't really develop a person, they can't develop a personality because they're, they're, um, they're, they're designed to, to praise God. They'll every now and they'll come in and they'll say thank you. And I think that the reason why they do that is because uh, somehow I've inspired them or they desire to inspire me. And, uh, I don't know where my words come from. All I think, I, all I can imagine is that maybe God pops in and throws a word into my brain and I just end up, uh, contemplating it and then some day later I just spurt it out in my message and then the, some of the angels pick up on it and they go whoa they don't, they don't know where it came from I don't know where it came from it's probably from God it's probably the way that God likes to reveal things to the angels you know because even though the angels know how to satisfy God, they don't know all that God knows. And so, when they get something that's really inspiring, they go, whoa, and God's like, hey, you don't know where that came from. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I think that's what's happening, you know. Every now and then it is Satan that comes through and, and it has to slap me down. But I I I know I'm probably at, probably not getting very much listenership, but I'm figuring you know I'm kind of like a wolf bed jack you know to the to the angel world, and then other people are pretty listening to this and said this guy's crazy, and I said well you have to be crazy to keep talking. I mean if you look at crazy people on the street, what are they doing most of the time? They're talking. That's how they're getting through their world. You think they're crazy because they're talking to themselves. But they need that in order to be human. If it weren't that, then they'd be schizophrenic and the voices would be in their head. And they wouldn't be talking at all. It would be in their head that the talking was occurring. You have to... Everybody, I think, every, though it says that we were designed for praise, I think we were designed to permit, to have a connection with other people in the world. But without that connection, you end up having the connection with yourself. And, uh, and you discuss in your head things. You either do it sanely by yourself knowing that there aren't multiple personalities but that you're just saying stuff and then listening to it and working on it working in the moment which is how I work or or you're going to be talking to hear I mean or you're going to have separate personalities which is scary because the people that usually get multiple personalities are people who are abused have been abused because that's when the brain can't adapt the, the person is is so stressed out and the brain knows that that stress is dangerous so what it'll do is it'll generate cells it'll generate identities and those identities will take on all of the torture that that person goes through from another say a, a parent or whatever that they're always getting beat they that if they can't take that, if they can't handle it, they get overstressed. I'm sure that's probably w when the brain decides, okay, we need to develop multiple personalities. And the personalities will take 
all the torture. And the and then when everything's normal, the main personality can come out and be themselves. But the way people who have multiple personalities describe it is that when things happen, they just black out. They're not there. The personalities are. The brain adapts to um, to protect the person. Yeah, I'm going to save this as a clip. 